First things first, with Damon and Mendelara, New Year, old problems for the Steelers, Damon. According to multiple reports, Antonio Brown got into a heated argument with Ben Roethlisberger earlier this week. Brown reportedly threw a ball at Big Ben, walked off, skipped multiple practices, did not return all week. He did show up at Heinz Field on Sunday, however, expecting to play and was told he would not be playing. He reportedly left at halftime in frustration. All right, Damien, what's your reaction to the latest drama? Look, Denver? I don't know who's nursing hangovers watching us right now, so I won't scream, but this is the most Steelers thing ever. <laughs> right. Like the most talented team potentially on paper coming into the season, at least offensively, ends up missing the postseason because time after time after time, they just kick the bucket, they just keep messing up. And for week 17, knowing you have to win, you absolutely have to win, and you must lean on your best players. And that includes Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown, first and foremost. For Brown to be so self-involved, so self-indulgent, yes. to have to throw a ball back at his quarterback because he's upset that, what, Juju is getting more attention or is voted team captain. It is just so silly and petulant to do that in a must-win situation and then be benched by the coach and then have to lie about it. They've got to lie about why he was benched, only for it to all come out. I like Mike Tomlin. I don't believe he should be fired. But this is such a poor referendum on Tomlin's leadership, on Antonio Brown's maturity, and the culture of the entire Steelers locker room. I mean, I, they've been getting passes for so long because I can't believe that this is the first time whenever Ryan Clark goes on TV and says this is AB being AB and he thought that he was the wrong guy to get paid. Well, that just tells me that they have a bad culture and they have a bad locker room. And then you want to add Le'Veon Bell and that whole situation to the mix. They have to really have a meeting about what they're going to do going forward because you can't get rid of them. So what are you going to do? How do you how do you fix this situation? I'm surprised that somebody has an EK and poly this guy and punched him in the face because I can't <laughs> imagine that he hasn't pulled this stick on some cornerback that was trying to you know guard him too hard in practice or something like that. But I'll ask you, Bart, with a team that has Super Bowl aspirations and a quarterback that has won a Super Bowl and a coach, how does it happen that guys within the locker room don't care enough to need to win Week 17, need to, the desire to get there? Why does selfishness think, like this happen? I think there was an element with the Steelers, because if you remember during the Le'Veon Bell saga, there was one guy that consistently had L. Bell's back. That was Antonio Brown. I think there was this feeling amongst certain Steelers, not many, but certain Steelers, that you know what? You know when the team gave up on this season? When they didn't bring back the best running back in football or one of the best running backs in football. And you know why we've struggled this year? Why we went from 7-2-1 to and one down to the playoffs? Our running game ran into a wall. And the other reason we lost some of those games was our quarterback threw horribly untimely interceptions and then went on radio and talked about how it was my fault, Antonio Brown. Remember that one? The pick against Denver? Ben and, is not without flaw here. I and, totally agree. And so I think that is a big part people are going to lay this at the feet of Mike Tomlin. And I, like you, think Tomlin's an excellent coach. I also understand why anything that happens with the team, some of it's on the coach or else why the hell is there a coach? So some of this has to fall at his feet. But there is an element of how good would Popovich have been if Duncan was always undercutting him? How good would Belichick have been if Brady were always undercutting him instead of doing the opposite of even when they didn't like it, publicly staying in line and supporting the coach, letting the coach rip them more than they rip anyone else so there's a trickle down. This Tomlin's never had that never had that benefit. He's always had to know that his quarterback of all players is going to be an out an X factor and then he's got this wide receiver who is talented as he is has shown horrid judgment. I'm a guy you've known me for 15 years. I've my entire life I've made You I, know horrid judgment. I, okay, Let's yes, see. that is that is correct. But expert at this. But I also it takes a big bridge for me to get to blaming a player for a behavior because I think yeah young rich empowered how would I act right like and that's oh, always, that. that's yeah. always for been me. how I felt but even I would have known at that age let's not Facebook live something when Mike Tomlin could say anything it's live to the world even I would know that even if I'm angry that it may be eighty thousand dollars missing from my condo let's not allegedly throw furniture off the balcony, as Antonio Brown's alleged to have done, and almost potentially kill a small child. Like, these are all things we know, at least alleged to have done with the furniture thing. Like, he doesn't show good judgment. And this, and the fact that he would skip the week of practices in what was a playoff game. 
they, if they win, they weren't necessarily in. But if they lose, they were definitely out. It was Correct. a playoff game. That's horrifying and sports horrifying. And I don't know what Tomlin can do. What can you do? Well, All he can do is not play him, and which is what he did, and they damn near lost because of it. The problem is that the best players for the Steelers are the ones that you cannot count on the most. It was Bell, mm -hmm. Brown, and, and Roethlisberger. And when you cannot count on those guys to make the right team decisions, you get what you have because this year. With but those, where's ownership? Well, hold on. With those three, there's the sense of it's me over we. With those three more than anyone else on that team. Because all three of them make very selfish decisions, intentionally or not. I mean, Big Ben's out there throwing other guys under the bus. Lev Bell didn't show up for his contract situation. AB obviously did what he did. But let's just stick to Brown for a second. What happens now with him moving forward? Can he survive on this team? Or have we seen the last of Antonio Brown. I think he can survive because he's so good, because he's so dynamic, and the Steelers have not had a history recently of jettisoning really good, talented guys unless they want too much money. They'll usually bring you back if it's just a character problem or a distraction problem. Remember, though, this. The Steelers have gone through a lot of talented wide receivers that were me over we guys, whether it was Antonio Holmes, Plaxico Burris, go down the list. They've always figured Mike out a way. Wallace go Mike he Wallace. Was great. They've always figured out a way to replace those guys. But boy, in this case, I think I think AB is so good, and they seem to have such a long leash with him that he'll probably come back. And it just feels like it's more of the same to me. And it's going to be more of the same. Well, I feel like the first time they can move him, they can't move him right now. But as soon as they can move him, they're going to move him. But with that being said, that usually means that you're rebuilding because Ben Roethlisberger has been hitting at retirement for the last couple of years. So I feel like they were really accepting this because they felt like they can have one more shot. With looking in, in, in the AFC North and what they've been able to do with you know the Ravens and Lamar Jackson and with Baker Mayfield, I don't know if that window isn't almost closed. And we've seen the best years of Ben Roethlisberger and this Pittsburgh Steelers team consistently being in the playoffs. This is for this Steelers season. It is a systemic failure, starting with the GM and what happened with Le'Veon Bell, because even if you don't want to extend him, then rescind the tag and use that money elsewhere, to Mike Tomlin for losing whatever leash he had on the team, it finally letting go, to Big Ben with those weekly radio spots that today he's going to continue and God only knows what he's going to say, to Le'Veon not showing up to Antonio Brown. That's how a team... Goes from 7-2-1 to one down to the playoffs. Only the third team ever, through 10 games, have a record that good and not make the playoffs. The other two, you know what happened to them? Their quarterbacks got hurt. 95 Raiders, 93 Dolphins suffered a season-ending injury to their quarterback. That's why they missed the playoffs. The Steelers have no such excuse. This they had every opportunity to make the postseason. They couldn't. And if there wasn't, if, if between Tomlin and Roethlisberger, there wasn't three Super Bowls and five appearances or whatever it is, they, one of those guys probably would be gone. But because they have built up that level of cachet with the team, they won't be. But they can't just run this thing back next year. I'm surprised that they survived with this level of dysfunction to win as many games as they did to even you know be at this point. I just don't understand. Where's the general manager in this? Where's the owner of this? Because if he missed two days of practice, then I need ownership to come up. And we need to find him and bring him in and let him understand that we will take every dollar that we can out of your ownership pocket. Ownership did reach out to him. No, you find him. You got the, you got your NFL <laughs> security. You can find exactly find where he is. Find your iPhone app. You should just figure out find, find, <laughs> find my wide receiver. Yeah, find right. my wide receiver. I mean, you, you show up. Only thing you only way you can hurt Antonio Brown is by taking his money away from you know conduct detrimental. Right. I'm sure they probably may try and get that game check back, try and find him. But I'm trying to see where he could have potentially voided this contract because right. of his behavior, much like we see going on in Jacksonville. I'll see if I can try and get him out of there that way and get that salary cap relief back. Damon, thanks so much for hanging out I with us. Yeah, Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Looking like men in black. Coming up, why is a quarter of the NFL looking for